Hey folks, in this video we're going to be talking about intermolecular forces, specifically London dispersion forces, which we can abbreviate as LDF. London dispersion forces are the weakest of all of the uh, intermolecular forces, and we're going to observe them in everything. Everything has the ability to exhibit London dispersion forces. So what is a London dispersion force? Oh my gosh. So if we have a atom, Whoop, our electrons are nice and evenly distributed around our positive nucleus. Um, but what can happen is, let's make our nucleus a little bit bigger, our electron cloud, since this is just electrons running around having a good time and determined by probability, they can actually shift. So it's not a perfect sphere. So it might get like a little bit elongated out this way for just a brief period of time, and then it'll probably revert back to this. But during this brief period of time, we have positive charge in our nucleus positive and we've got our negative electron cloud well since the electron cloud is bigger over here and smaller over here we get a partial charge just for a brief brief period of time so this is what we call a induced dipole this is not a regular dipole because it is only induced it is temporary it is not permanent like dipoles that we see in polar molecules so when we have this temporary dipole, well, if this happens to be next to a, another atom, well, then that atom can also be like, oh, there's a partial po negative charge there. Well, that's also going to like maybe push my electron cloud over. So I'll develop a partial positive there and a partial negative there. And now there's going to be some attraction between these two opposite charges. The important thing to remember is that this is very, very temporary. Both of these molecules will probably, or in this case, atoms, will revert back to their regular state shortly after this and not really have a dipole on them. So what can make a London dispersion force uh, more interesting? So this is going to be more powerful in larger molecules. So if we look at these three different molecules, um, the main difference is their size. Uh, we have this kitty cat up here, this is hexane, down here we've got propane, and we've got methane. Names aren't terribly important. What is important is their size. So if we imagine the electron cloud around these molecules, well hexane up here has the largest electron cloud on it. And then propanes is a little bit smaller, and then methane's got a pretty small electron cloud. So because this has a larger electron cloud, there's more spaces that could become polarized. So the electron cloud might dip away there and get expanded out here. In that case, we would have a partial positive charge there as it recedes closer to these nuclei and a partial negative up here. There's more spaces to induce a dipole. Here it's very small. We have only got, you know, little, little spots that we can induce a dipole. So if we have a larger molecule, then we're going to have more London dispersion forces. Um, that's really the main thing that's governing London dispersion forces is going to be the size of our molecule. Larger equals more LDF. So that's about all there is to say about our friend London dispersion forces. Um, I hope you enjoyed this video, and I hope you have a great rest of your life. Bye.